Welcome to Alpha Beta Launch FinTech Founder Stories presented by Scylla. I'm your host, Katie Bohr. Today, we have two very special guests joining us today from the Flip Factory app co-founders, Jake Harris and Juan Huerta. Jake is the head of development and Juan is the head of operations. Gentlemen, it is such a pleasure to have you guys on the show here today. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you very much. Let's just break down exactly what the Flip Factory app is. For folks that aren't familiar with the app in your company, tell us a little bit about it. Well, the application uh, was founded by two general contractors who wanted to come up with a way to better execute construction projects for the flipping industry. So it's fintech uh, for the flipping industry. When did you guys start all of this? Like how long has the Flip Factory app been in place? Flip Factory actually launched uh, a couple of weeks back, um, but the origination of Flip Factory actually begun uh, two and a half years almost now, hard to believe, but two and a half years ago, Jake and I met and I can, we can, I could say that that's whenever everything began. I'm curious about the inception of your guys' company. Was this um, a company that was created out of sheer necessity? Was there uh, a need where you guys felt like, man, there's this hole here and we really have to find a way to fill it? Or how did Flip Factory begin specifically? We built Flip Factory for ourselves. Um, Juan and I were two investor general contractors, and uh, we realized that there was a lot of uh, concerns and issues re revolving around the cash flow model for the construction process. Um, there was a lot of risk associated with that, both with uh, the, the entire model as it, as it currently stood. And Juan and I kind of did one of those imagineering kind of concepts where we closed our eyes and said, what is this industry going to look like in 10 years? And we said, uh, it's kind of frustrating that we can, we can track a, a, a pizza from our phone, but we can't track our projects that are going on across town. And with those kind of guiding principles, we came up with an idea uh, that attacked a very significant and very old business problem in the construction world of cash flow. And uh, we kept pushing and pushing and asking, what could, what could this do? How could this work? How could this be? And it's evolved into something far beyond we, what we originally thought. And we've gotten nothing but great support from uh, the lenders, the investors, the general contractors, all the way down to the subcontractors as to how we're proposing uh, this this change in cash flow could be executed. When this all started, what were you guys doing previously? How 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 did you guys jump in with this? Prior to to Flip Factory starting, I was uh, I had been in in as an investor, or working as an investor and as a GC for uh, about three years, three plus years. Um, I had uh, I'd worked for Corporate America all the way up to 2016 decided to become a, a investor and do some flips, um, which we were doing. Uh, we, we would do buy and holds, we would do flip for ourselves, and then I started uh, as a GC doing flips for other people. And eventually that just kind of led on to tacking on to our knowledge until the time that I came to, to meet Jake and we put our brains together as to what was affecting our industry and how we could do better. But essentially it was just for him and I to be able to be more effective in what we were doing. That's what gave Flip Factory its rise. So were you guys working together previously or did you guys meet out because of this? Uh, we, were, we were independent contractors, both doing our own projects and flipping houses for other people. We met as a peer-to-peer -peer relationship where we would meet once a week and we would talk about uh, improving our own process. So we wrote down the steps to actually flip a house uh, and then we sat there and started sharing our network of resources. We created a, an Excel spreadsheet to share our directory. And we started talking about who was a good painter, who was a good plumber, who's a backup for them, all those kinds of things. Uh, and that was really the fundamental concept that started it was the ability to have an expert process and a, and, and a shared directory. The cash flow piece tied it all together in the sense that we saw the opportunity one day, Juan and I were sitting there having a conversation. We said, what, wouldn't it be cool if rather than the current cash flow model, which is lender to investor to general contractor to subcontractor, wouldn't it be cool if the, the lender could somehow pay the subcontractor directly? And that was kind of the, the question that started and spawned the, the next conversation, which was how do we get them to do that? How do we take out uh, uh, you know, take out the other areas and make it a streamlined, 
easy flow process so that they, and that's kind of where this all came from. Is that the way the app is currently working or is that so what you guys are working towards creating right now? The app changes the cash flow model, right? Like I said, right now it's, it's in a current straight line, lender to investor, investor to general contractor, general contractor, to subcontractor. The way that we do it is that that's a straight line up and down. We look at it almost as an X. So the lender and the investor on the upper level put money into what we call a project wallet. The project wallet is then distributed and, and scheduled out with a very specific line item of scope and values, and then distributed out to the general contractor and the subcontractor directly, which is only made available to us through the digita digitization and tokenization of funds, which we found through uh, our, our partner, Scylla. I have to ask, we're talking about your guys' backgrounds and um, your experience flipping houses. How did you go from general contractors to app developers in a fintech industry. That seems like a, a, a huge leap, a, a big a big change up for you guys. What what was that like? 2008, I jumped out of, of corporate America. I was, a, I was in the hotel business and became a general contractor for the hotels, but renovating hotels didn't get me to my passion, which was real estate and actually becoming an owner. So I, I decided to get out of the large scale fix and, or fixing and renovation of hotels and try my hand at single family. Well, when I went to single family real estate, there was really no process and procedure available. So that's that can tell you kind of how things got started with our, our desire for process and procedure. And Juan talked about his background. With that, we, we just started to attack the problem. And, and we realized that we were not technologically savvy. We wrote, at that point, we had written an expert process. Uh, we had a, a, a shared directory. And we had an idea on how to manage cash flow. So we were going to do one of two things. We were either going to write a book, uh, which nobody would read, or we were going to develop an app. And we call it an app for, for ease of purpose sake, but this is really a platform, a platform where people can manage distribution of funds, uh, can, can trust uh, the distribution of funds in a certain way, and can scale their business. Um, and that's really what we've been pushing for is trying to have people see that they can they can scale this, that the new investors can feel confident in their process and procedure and move forward. But the larger investors, the guys that scale and do a lot of projects on a day to day basis, they get to program their money. They can basically set it and forget it because they know it can only be spent in that fashion. I'm and curious um, about the beta stage, what that looked like and how you guys um, got to where you are currently in the sense of going from just the idea stage to really having something besides just out on paper and, and actually starting to execute the plan for this. What, what was that like? I mean, going back to what Jake was saying whenever we first met, I mean, we would literally sit at our local restaurant with flashcards, putting You're kidding. together. Oh yeah, absolutely. We would, uh, we would sit at a local restaurant every Friday and put flashcards together, which was the, the initial, that's how the process was developed. But this concept followed us all the way into putting this in front of our developing team, right? We took these the, these flashcards concept of how every little thing was supposed to work. And when we came up to, to choose our developing team, we literally would take what Jake and I did and we would put it in the whimsical uh, right program, which is a program that allows us to take what we have in our mind and how it's supposed to work in software so these guys could just write code, right? And we would do that. We did that for, we did that from March of 2020 till every chance we would get um, that we were sitting here because of, of, of COVID that we couldn't move anywhere. Every time our development team needed something, we would sit down on the computer and we would just map it out for them. And that gave them the ability to start writing code and focus on the code rather getting versus getting the idea out of our head and then start writing code. And I'll we, let Jake take from there. Yeah, we when most we we received a compliment from our development team, which we completely appreciate and, and value very highly. But they said we were the most prepared clients they've ever received. Oh, wow. And I think that was because we came to them with over 300 pages of documentation. And we were doing what we what were proposing, what, what we were proposing that we built, we were doing in an analog form. Uh, as, as a general contractor, uh, I would set up a different bank account for every client and then they would fund the bank account and that money would only be dedicated for that project. 
that is the grandfather of the project wallet. The project wallet is dedicated funds only for a specific address. Uh, so we would literally have multiple checkbooks, multiple credit cards or debit cards for those products. So everything we were, everything we were proposing, we were doing in an analog format. So when you talk about alpha, it was really, it was really our, our businesses. Our businesses were the alpha and we had to prove out a uh, theory. We had to prove out examples. So when they would come back to us and ask and say, well, what happens here? What happens there? We would go, oh, well, this is the process or this is how we do this or this is how we do that. And so we won the award from them for uh, most prepared client because it wasn't just a concept. It was literally an analog form and we had proven in the analog that it had value. And now we wanted to digitize it and share it with the rest of the, uh, the, the contractors, owners, investors that were doing the work. Can I ask, did COVID make this process easier or more difficult? Did it give you, it sounds like maybe it gave you guys more brainstorming time, more time to get those analog ideas down on paper, or did it throw more monkey wrenches into the whole charade? No, it actually made it easier for us. Um, it, it, uh, Jake and I shut down our businesses because of COVID as general contractors. And so it allowed us to, to take all that energy that we had to go out in the field and get together every day. It was like going to the gym, seven o'clock sharp on over the computer, putting together all this information for our development team. So they didn't have to worry about that piece. All they had to worry about was work, you know, working on the code, making sure they would work. So COVID forced you guys to close down your guys' businesses? The state of North Carolina came back and actually issued out some uh, notes and we confirmed, I confirmed with the local uh, uh, district or the local attorney for the state of, or for Durham, the city of Durham. And they said, if it's not essential, we would ask that you cease construction. And, and I showed that to my clients and they weren't very happy. Mm -hmm. uh, but we used that as a catalyst and as an opportunity to, uh, you know, focus and dedicate these, these, you know, higher energy brainwaves because we both believe that if we would have worked on this after hours, it would have been, we would have been six months behind where we are. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that COVID did was it also opened up a lot of people's mind to the idea is that there's a different way of doing business just in general. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea of non-contact real estate, you know, and construction transactions uh, became a real thing. We could sit there and say, how can you pay somebody without physically seeing them on property? How can we use the idea of geotagged photos uh, as a as a proof of work complete in order to have somebody release funds. And it also, uh, our subcontractors became aware and, and liked the fact of a digital wallet, which yeah. years ago, that wouldn't have been a thing. They would have said, either I get a check or I get cash. I don't, I don't do this digital thing. But the subcontractors became aware of it and it kind of, it kind of catapulted us forward uh, in, this, in this age. I've heard of digital wallets and I've heard obviously of, of contract work and um, even just having a, a great online um, CRM, but it sounds like you guys are, are taking this really to the next level. And like you said, proving the work with geotagged photos, but with everything you're talking about, as far as sort of uh, eliminating the middleman and all of that, I am scratching my head trying to think if there is anything else out there like that. And it seems like you guys are really um, first in your time as far as creating something that I can't think of anything even remotely close to an app like this that takes all of those different pieces and streamlines it into one process. Is that is that the case? With our research, yes. In fact, um, prior to 2019, November 2019, the way that we are moving funds, there is uh, regulations in place where this could not be impossible. It would, you would fit, you would have run into so much problems that you could not do what we're doing. We were essentially without knowing, unbeknownst to us, until we kind of started talking to our development team and Scylla. We didn't know that up until 2019 that what we're doing now was not a thing. What you're doing is not an easy process, and I'm sure that you guys understand that. But for people on the outside that are just kind of jumping in, they don't understand all of the red tape and all of the hurdles that are involved with uh, launching a fintech company and also producing and executing a digital wallet like such. 
what were those hurdles specifically that you guys faced? And, and tell me about how you guys ended up bringing Scylla on board. The We looked at how it's currently being done. And how it's currently being done is primarily through ACH. When I say currently being done, how are people currently taking transactions and moving transactions in a digital fashion? That is ACH. That is 1970s technology. Uh, that is state by state. <laughs> money transfer, you know, licenses, lots of time, lots of money, lots of energy. And it's also reactionary instead of instead of proactionary because our, so we we decided that if you could schedule the money, uh, that would be much different than if you just and then you, if the, then if you were just on the back end trying to execute a transaction post work. Uh, so we we took the, we took a head on and said we'd like to figure out a way to take a budget have that budget inserted into a, a disinterested third party through an executable schedule of values, a budget. And then that budget gets only handed out using these schedule of values lines, envelopes, and the general contractor and the subcontractor can't spend more than what's in that envelope. Uh, so it really kind of, it, in the words of our lender, it put a padlock on the, on the budget because you cannot spend more than you're allotted which in the flipping business is is what well, what would happen is there would be a, a a deposit made, funds would creep, and then pretty soon somebody's coming back and saying, "Hey, we need more money." That can't happen with our application because there's no way to spend more than what's allotted, and it and we just we just locked it down. We we wrote it into the code. You cannot spend more than what's allotted. I'm curious about the. Um the reaction that you got. And I say that because when we talk to fintech founders uh, and startup companies, you know, we, I, I always think it's interesting to hear the reaction from lenders and from banks. And, you know, even with like cryptocurrency, the reaction is, you know, very different. What was it like when you pitched this idea to the lenders? And was this a general like, hey, that's a great idea. I've never even heard of this. Or was there some convincing, hey, we've got this great idea what do you think? And, and can you get behind it? The ma major thing that we really heard from a lender standpoint is they didn't like the idea of pre-funding. Uh, they say, we don't pre-fund construction. And we had to get them over the hurdle of this is not pre-funding. This is advanced budgeting. This is this is kind of like budgeting for for a child. You're from, uh, like Dave, We would use Dave Ramsey's example of putting money in envelopes and say, this money can only be used for this item. And we would show that 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 the trigger of the subcontractor's invoice, along with geotagged photos, precluded anybody from messing with the money until it was until the work was executed. So once the lenders understood that this was not a pre-funding situation, but this was rather prescribed or hard-coded money to a specific purpose, then they really got on board and they said, "Now we can do this." But a lot of them have uh, regulations and stipulations with their investors where they can't do a pre-funding situation. And so once we were able to, to convince them and show them that this was not a pre-funding situation, they were all for it. They, they immediately jumped and said, this is what the industry needs. You're solving a huge problem. I can lend at a greater scale. I have the ability to trust that this money is going to a specific purpose. And not only that, but the people who are investing in me as a lender will be more confident because I can guarantee that the funds are going where they said they were going to go. And, and that was an amazing feeling to talk to those lenders and to, and to have them understand that, that we could protect their money going out and they could use that to get more money coming in. To add a little bit onto that, outside of the lenders, we've also had a really good response from the subcontractors and the general contractors alike, uh, which originally we really didn't understand what the reaction was going to be because it's a paradigm shift in the way things are being done, right? Um, but... After talking to 65 plus subcontractors, now to date, we've talked to over 100 who fully understand our, our model. We've only had one person in the whole thing that said that they wouldn't like it. The rest of them were, yes, we like it. They see the value in the fact that they, in their words, no longer have to chase the money. If yeah. they're going to get to the job site, they know that their money is guaranteed. So they get to focus on performing that work the right way get in and get out. And then through Flip Factory, they're also able to do their own sales. So 
these guys get everything that they're looking for. They don't like to do sales. They are very hands-on. They like to get in, do their work, do it well, and get out, but not have to chase their money like they're having to now. Um, and then from the general contractors that we've talked to that are that that you know we have relationships with and some that we don't, the one thing that they've liked the most out of everything that Flip Factory offers to them is the fact that they no longer have to play the cash flow game. They no yeah. longer have to manage the cash flow coming from the borrower or the owner of that property and their own company's cash flow, which it's it's a trickle down effect. And so the response has actually been very positive on all ends um, of the spectrum. Well, and that's interesting that, ha I mean, obviously you need that good response because I'm, I'm curious how you guys started it in terms of fundraising. I mean, both of you guys, were you know you launched this in the middle of a pandemic you guys quit your jobs you really put your heart and soul into this passion project but were you also financially backing this entirely on your own or were there angel investors or how did you guys fund this process and and hire developers to write the code this is kind of where we get some weird looks um we we wanted to return the opportunity for reward and benefit of this uh, awesome platform to the people who could benefit the most and who, who would appreciate it the most. So what we, what we did was we went to a, a legal team. Uh, they wrote up an SEC offering for us, a Reg D SEC offering. But what we are, what we are doing and in the process of doing is raising profit shares. So we made an agreement uh, with our initial group and we said we are uh, going to offer you a share uh, which you can buy into, and that entitles you to uh, 1% of our after-tax profits for a duration of five years, uh, but allows us to keep equity ownership. And the returns were projected at 30 to 40 X. And we have people, the, the same investors, lenders, and, and even contractors uh, that we're working with and we built this for are now investing with us in this profit share arrangement and are, are, are now our greatest supporters because now they get to benefit more than just using it. They're, they're now supporting us because they now get to reap the benefits. What's your team look like right now? How many people are on your, on your team? So uh, our team right now, uh, direct team is, is Jake and myself and a development team of uh, five individuals. Mm -hmm. um, we are currently in the process of recruiting a, a sales force and um, also customer service. Uh, it, that's the beginning of it. Um, as far as our um, immediate HR needs, we did partner up with, uh, with a PEO who is helping us uh, along those process to, uh, of HR guidelines, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we are in the process of hiring and bringing on uh, different team members right now. So tell me about the pitfalls and the mistakes. It sounds like it sounds like you're probably still learning some of these just because you guys are so new. But if you're able to point out anything, and I ask this not to highlight any kind of wrongdoing, but because I think that it's really interesting to learn from other people, whether you learned maybe some of the pitfalls or mistakes other people made, or maybe something that you've learned that you think this would really help other people to, to not do the same thing or to do differently if they were in a similar situation starting their own fintech company. Or maybe you're so new, it's, it, that hasn't happened. But what, what have you heard about as far as pitfalls or mistakes that you guys have been very intentional about trying to work around? We had an idea. So part of, part of the reason that we brought our tech team in was because Juan and I are not technical people. I, I understand en enough to be dangerous, but not enough to do it. But we we really enveloped and brought them in and engaged them in a full-time relationship with us so that we could, we could build and reiterate on these things. We had an idea, Juan and I had an idea for something we were calling the loading zone, right? Flip factory, loading zone. It was kind of an idea that we were going to bring in that would help uh, onboard new investors, help them understand the process of flipping a house. And it was going to be kind of a forum and a blog and some videos and some other things. And, and this, I will, I'll rack this up as a failure because when I, when I got questioned by some of the people over the tech side, we really started to look at the value and really look at the value proposition. And I, and I had to, we had to be strong enough to come up with the idea, 
but also strong enough to let it go and let it die. Because what happened out of that conceptual meeting that we had with one of the, the guys in the tech team was we came up with something completely better. Uh, one of the things that I think was going to be extremely important uh, is the idea that since we're actually transpiring cost data and cost distribution down to the subcontractor level, we, we are going to be capturing that spend data and returning it back to the industry, actually giving costing information back uh, to this market. And had we not been strong enough to let our idea of the loading zone go and create what is now going to be the index, allowing investors to, to kind of have a, a ballpark as to what, what, a, what a rehab should cost them, right? What should this flip cost me in this area? Yeah, had we not let that let that failed idea go, we would be pursuing and, and, and climbing the wrong ladder. And now we're, we're targeting a new one that's, that's going to give us far more information and far better information because if we're going to put a padlock on the budget, we need to start with an accurate budget. So it would be fair to say then don't be so married to an idea that you can't kind of deviate and make changes? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Be and listen, to listen to your team, down. trust your team, get a good team, listen to your team and listen openly because had one and I been, you know, focused or pig headed, we would have been proceeding down the wrong road. A hundred percent. Who is the flip factory app catering to specifically, or what is, what is your dream customer look like right now? We want to have 50% of the flips in the U S using our platform by 2026. Lofty uh, goals. This is the, the small guys, the, the big guys, everybody can see value in this proposition because it's the, it's the future of this industry, being able to work it through your platform, through your phone, through your web, uh, you know, direct money, dedicate money, basically plan the work and then work the plan uh, and true freedom as an investor. So we're working for the investors. Uh, we've set this up as investors because Juan and I said we set it up for ourselves. So we, we built this so that we could scale our businesses and do more flips uh, and, and make more money. These are the guys that are out doing their, 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 their flips every day, but they often fall into not having the knowledge that they need to have in the construction arena, which is where you either, the, either the flip succeeds or it fails. And through Flip Factory, one of the things that we're giving back to the investors it's not only a process, but we're giving them the ability to source labor from there as well. Being able to, to take a flip from acquisition all the way up to sale. That's our primary focus in which it, the person that, that we're focusing on is the investor. It's, it's the investor who's coming in who wants to do a flip, but doesn't have all the knowledge they need to have when it comes to construction. It, it helps everybody from the lender down to the subcontractor but we needed to clear that, that black hole of construction that a lot of people fall into just because they don't have that knowledge base. The, the beauty of this app is that there is this wallet, there is this uh, ACH aspect that makes this really streamlined, this whole process a lot cleaner, a lot neater, but that's not an easy process. And I know that there is a tremendous amount of red tape and regulations. So, Tell me about how you circumnavigated all of that and um, your relationship with Scylla. How did you guys learn about Scylla? What, what do they do specifically for you guys? They circumnavigate red tape. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the opportunity that we were presented with using traditional technology or the historical ACH would have been a state-to-state -state money transfer licensing would have been uh, days instead of minutes, uh, would have been transactional time that would have slowed down. Uh, what Scylla, I think, figured out for us, and we were exploring three different entities uh, on the recommendation of our technology team. And upon reviewing them, we actually picked one and then changed our mind as we looked further, further and further into Scylla. Uh, and, I, and we needed to re-review and, and, and make a change. But the opportunity was by, by housing this distribution point into Scylla's platform, it allowed us to, to, to not have to have the regulations of the state by state come into play. We're not transferring money across state lines. This is, this is money being 
sent into a, a wallet for, for a specific purpose distribution uh, as prescribed by the owner, as it's signed off by the lender, and as contractually obligated by the general contractor. So it's, it's, it's money that literally has, each dollar bill has a destination written on it, and then it gets distributed once the work has been completed, signed off, lien releases have been executed using our top level platform on top of Scylla's bottom level relationship with the, the fiduciary bank. Did you guys know how to do any of that before all of this or did the Scylla really help walk you guys yeah. through this complicated process? I, I was carrying, I keep these around for, for, I was carrying around several different checkbooks. So oh, that I wow. could, so I could literally pay everybody every Friday afternoon. I would roll to the job site and hand out checks to everybody that rolled by. And yeah, no, I had no clue. The, yeah. Do you even use those checkbooks anymore now? They, they are going in the uh, Flip Factory Hall of Shame, uh, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Yeah. Well, maybe they need to be framed so that you can remember where you guys came from, because it seems like your your whole mission is to help other people basically, yeah. you know, cut those ties to those checkbooks. And that's that's an incredible thing. So yeah, um, as far as tell me about why you guys ended up choosing Scylla over another company, because you're actually not the first person that is, has told me that, that started along with another company and just decided, man, this is this is not the perfect fit. Why did you guys switch things up in the process? I would say that we we started off with a traditional provider, but realized that Scylla was enabling the future. I mean, this is the way that it needs to be done. They were they were handling it the way that it was done. Scylla's handling it the way that it needs to be done. And since we've challenged this industry, which construction is one of the oldest industries around, since we challenged this industry to think differently, we needed to make sure that our payment process was cutting edge, leading edge. And so we sat there and really looked at it and said, okay, that will that will get us around the track as it stands, but we're building for the future. We need to we need to look at the future tools and technology. And and I'm not I, I I'm not afraid to say that Scylla was was giving us that. So one of the big things that it sounds like you guys do is just I love the the connection to the checkbooks, but it really is cutting the ties to the checkbooks, which makes me want to go into this next thing. And that is obviously a, a big part of what you guys do is streamline the revenue side for general contractors, for contractors, for the whole flipping industry. So the finance side of that is really important. And it's frankly, it's critical to what your app does. But but can I ask if you had to, to narrow down what your mission is beyond revenue, beyond just generating an income for the two of you guys who left your jobs, what would you say that mission is as far as accomplishing something with the Flip Factory in general? Jake and I have always one of our biggest passions. And uh, I mean, uh, we've I've had investors come to me just like they've come to Jake and they say, can you help us do this, but do it you know, make sure that you can do it because one of the things that we do is we'll help others. That's what really drives us. We like to help people. And one of the biggest components that drove Flip Factory forward was the fact that we were going to be able to help those people in a lot of ways that followed us, that were loyal to us, that needed the help really, uh, which was your subcontractor, which was your investor. Right. I've been helping subcontractors out, translating for them since I since I can remember. I mean, I was learning how to speak English, just freshly got here from Mexico and I would get handed letters to, to translate for people in, in specifically in the construction arena, but all different places. And so my passion for helping people has always been Flip Factory at its core allows us to help out as many of those people as we can in the right way. I think that the other the other component of this, in, in addition to being able to help people, which is what Juan and, I, Juan and I feel called to do, is that this process change marks a change in the way projects can, will, and should be done in the future. I think what you're seeing here is the turning point of, of a very old industry having a new way of doing business this is this is the revolution. This is the revolution of the cash flow on the way that things should be done 
by taking the, the funding for the project, putting it into a disinterested third party, holding it, and then, and then dis distributing it so that the cash flow problems of an owner or a general contractor or anyone else in the system don't affect the project. The project remains and, and is stable with this change of, of cash flow. It is totally different. It's it is new. What's the what what has the response been thus far? And and maybe you haven't had a ton of response because I know you guys just launched. But but when people see this and they see that hey, this is different than how it's always been done. What what is the reaction of of customers of of people to hear about this? Revolutionary, and this is the way it should have been. And 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 people are literally face palming and saying, why hasn't this been done before? <laughs> Why isn't this the way it's been done always? You know, what what changed? And so we have to kind of, we have to walk through that conversation and say, well, in 2019, this wasn't even available to happen. Only recently as technology caught up, subcontractors just accepted the idea of a digital payment. I said, there's a lot of things that have come together at the right time. And this is the, the, the right time for us to push for this change because only now due to these three or four things that have come together, the two, two greatest being regulations and, and subcontractor of, uh, uh, interest and acceptance, can we do what we're doing now? Three, four years ago, wouldn't it be possible? And now we even have subcontractors asking us to get paid in, in crypto. I mean, three, four years ago, that wouldn't have been a thing. <laughs> yeah, they would have been like, what is crypto? <laughs> right. Yeah. And is that something that you guys are doing currently or something that you guys are working to branch out into crypto payments? Once the subcontractor receives the money in their in their wallet or the digital or the general contractor into their wallet, there's a lot of different ways that they can get it out. Uh, we're working right now. Right now, we have a one to one relationship where they could transfer it to a personal bank. But in the future, they're going to be able to do it to send it to a cash point and a pickup point. They can send it outside the country to back to home if they want. Uh, they can buy Bitcoin, they can use it and they can keep it in their digital wallet and use it for services like buying tools or gas or payments. We have a lot of opportunities because we're literally providing an opportunity to, to provide a bank to a subcontractor who's not used to banking, who doesn't really understand or appreciate you know, all the different nuances. And so we're trying to bank the unbanked community as best we can. We're taking it all the way to the subcontractor and linking the entire chain providing transparency, comfort, security, and trust for everybody in the program. Are you guys having fun? I mean, I know that this all yes. came out of a, really the, a period of necessity. And I know that's not really a, a technical question to ask founders of a fintech company, but I have to ask because there's a little bit of passion that seeps through when I'm talking to you guys, taking something that you guys have done, transformed, redone, recreated, and built out of necessity. And it seems like Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like you guys are really enjoying yourselves and seeing this grow. Is that an accurate assessment? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I, I don't think that there has been a day um, for me since we started this where where it hasn't been fun um, or where I'm talking to somebody about Flip Factory or somebody doesn't bring up Flip Factory. I mean, it. there's days where I will be away with family uh, wherever we were in the mountains two, two, three weeks ago. And one of our friends came up to me and they're like, I just want to hear more about what you're doing. Right. <laughs> um, or I will be with, uh, I will be with my subcontractors and we're talking about a job because they need help. And it's like, man, can you just hurry up with flip factory and, and get it going? And that's a driver for me, you know, but uh, that's got to feel amazing. Yeah. It's, it's been really fun. We've had, great reception from everybody i mean a few weeks ago we launched at the pitbull conference and the 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 response from the people there and the caliber of people was beyond what jake and i could have ever imagined and so it's been great it's been one heck of a journey one heck of a ride but it's been really fun there's a value proposition seen by everybody in the chain uh the lenders see uh, a trust confidence value the owners see uh, access to resources and, and, tr and trusted processes that they can do and they can trust in that. General contractors know that they don't have to play the cash flow shuffle game and subcontractors are guaranteed payments. So there really is a value add to everybody in the, in the chain. This is not a win-lose. This is a win-win across the board. 
and it's it's not only a two sided platform, it's four sided, right? We go all the way down to the subcontractor, the material provider. That excites us. That excites us. We can change the lives of a lot of subcontractors and general contractors who need that process and procedure and, and that confidence and cash flow. The investors know that they can they can have that that resource to them and we can help them through and get them through the project successfully so they can do more projects and the lenders can scale their business to grow more. So the opportunity to help people is something that definitely gets me up in the morning and gets started. And this helps everybody that it touches. And that's what really gets us excited and we get very passionate about for sure. And it sounds like COVID was the kind of kick in the butt that really made it happen and maybe made it happen soon. Maybe it would have happened five, 10 years from now, but it seems like COVID for some, some founders and maybe for you guys was just the perfect kick in the butt to get this launched and get this going. Absolutely. It most certainly was. Yeah, uh, six, six months to a year advancement for sure. Wow. Wow. Okay. So before I let you guys go, I, I know I kind of talked about pitfalls and mistakes at one point, but I want to talk about some of the amazing things you guys have done. And if you're willing to share maybe a few industry secrets, what would you say that you've learned from your guys' experience? What would you say that you have really taken away that you could impart that knowledge on someone else? For me, is uh, this is going to sound cliche, but if you have an idea and there's nothing to it but to do it, um, it's not easy. You're going to be scared. There's times you're operating out of your comfort zone every day. Um, but push forward. Push forward. Reach out to the people that are next to you, to your network. There, You'll be surprised how many people are out there that are willing to help you and guide you along where you get stuck, right? Um, another big thing for me is, is Jake. Um, you know, one of the things that Jake has always said to me is I wouldn't do it for me, but I would do it for you. Right. Uh, and, and it's true that that's literally how this partnership works. It's not, we don't look at our partnership as a, it's just a monetary value there. No, it's way more than that. Um, to us, the money really doesn't matter. It's making sure that we do the right thing by each other and by our families. Um, and we hold that very close and dear to our hearts. And that really being able to have somebody like that, that you can trust and partner up with, uh, it has no value, no monetary value to it. And that for me, gives me a lot of confidence knowing that I have somebody like that next to me and the sheer will and power to be able to push forward. Even when we reach a point where we're like, what do we do now? Um, we'll, we, it has happened to us where we probably, it takes more time and energy to say, what do we do next to, than for us two to get together and figure it out. And so having that just kind of helps us push forward. You're always operating. If you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you're always gonna be operating out of your comfort zone. Don't let that stop you. I know everybody's looking for different ways to invest money. Uh, and I know some people have been telling us the stock market's doing this or that. If there anyone was ever interested in flipping a piece of real estate, uh, we are we are there to help them. We are there to guide them and to assist them with our expert templates and our process and 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 assistance. So if anybody has that kind of level of interest uh, or wants to just learn more about that process, we we we're here to help. We're here to make sure that that project continues and moves forward. I do want to encourage people to go to your guys' website because you guys really do break it down as far as um, who your services are created for. You've got a, a very streamlined website where it really talks about um, the different services that you guys provide, but also who benefits specifically, lender, owner, contractor, subcontractor, and then how you guys can help each one of them. So it really helps navigate that process as well. Well, Jake and Juan, it was such a pleasure to talk to you guys today. I know your time is really valuable and I know that you guys are busy guys trying to get all of this together as you've uh, just launched your app. So I really appreciate you taking the time to be open with us and, and share your guys' story here on Alpha Beta Launch FinTech Founder Stories presented by Scylla. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks for listening to Alpha Beta Launch FinTech Founder Stories presented by Scylla. I'm your host, Katie Bower. Hey, if you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to check out all our episodes, subscribe, and hit that like button below. Thank you.